Hello, hope you're good. Today we're testing another batch of kitchen gadgets. We've done hundreds over the years and we're gonna start off today with this uh, onion pod. I really, really do wish I got a red onion now. Um, I got a white onion because I think it might weep a little bit more uh, and show the progress during this video uh, whilst we work on the other gadgets. So let's slice an onion. So we've got two onion halves like that. They look, well, they look like onions, don't they? That's because they are. Right, this is the official onion plate, okay? We're gonna put this in the background of the video and see if it discolors in any way. Whereas the other one will go... <laughs> Do you know what this looks like? It looks like a little cloche for an onion, doesn't it? It's like, oh, hey! <laughs> that, that was a lot funnier in my head, sorry. So it's gonna stop it kind of being exposed to anything. Basically a glorified Tupperware tub, isn't it? In the shape of an onion half. <laughs> Right, so we're off and running. They can sit around there in the background. Of course, uh, before commenting down below on any of these gadgets, just remember some of these can help people with certain disadvantages in the kitchen. Some are novelty, and some, as we found over the years, are pretty terrible. Actually, I do need some more onion for our main sort of hub today, our main gadget, okay? So just a little bit of diced onion. Well, and hopefully, like some of you, our version normally of that onion pod is literally just doing that and bunging it in the fridge. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It's the same purpose. You're airtight. Now this uh, is uh, something called a Flexi Zesty, but it's by Microplane and it says, that's the actual company, it says Microplane there, as in, it says, like that's what I thought the term was for like these sorts of small graters and it says Microplane, the original. So is it a little bit like Hoover, how a Hoover is a brand, whereas the right term is vacuum, right? But anyhow, this is like a handheld zestery thing. It's really, really light. And you'd think that it would all sort of collect perhaps in this huge bucket underneath, but you pop that there. And what you've actually got is kind of like a little recess there, like a little bathtub, quite a shallow bathtub actually in some ways. It's quite disappointing, but then again, you don't always need that much lemon and lime zest. And actually with that surface there, it's kind of like, well, where's it gonna go? You'd think it would just kind of like stick on there rather than under there. So this is perfect for lemon and lime, which we'll shove with our onion uh, now. I'll wash it first. So let's just see. Oh, crikey, that's really sharp. I can feel it. And it's only a little bit on the surface. Look at that. That smells amazing. I really want a mojito now. Yeah, I tell you what, that is really doing well. That might be one of the best graters or microplane, being official, I've ever used. That's, that's just great. I know some of you are probably like, Barry, why are you getting excited about that? If you are, you're new here, okay? And we've got another gadget for the lemon in a minute, but we will just try the lemon too. I am actually pleasantly surprised that the zest is not going anywhere and it is tucking neatly into that bathtub below. Just imagine a citrus bathtub. I'm not saying you bath in lemon juice, because if you've got a cup, ooh. Let's have a look. Ugh, wow. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I feel like I've just made a field. Oh, that smells brilliant. Right, we'll just get you down there because it's all gonna get mingled together. Oh, that feels really nice. There's not like any moisture at all. It's almost like a, like a grass. There we are, like lemon and lime grass. <laughs> not my favorite snack of choice. That is genuinely really, really good. But what if you want more than the zest from your lemon, lime or other citrus thing? I feel like I've omitted the orange and potentially the grip. No, not the grip, the, the grip. The grapefruit. This by Phantom Chef. Found this in a bargain bin for uh, 2 dollars It is a lemon squeezer, but also with a little thing on it to help ream. Which out of context sounds a little bit cheeky, but hey ho Oh, there you go. Wow, that looks really cheap looking. I'm definitely gonna wash this, but even like the, um, I'm gonna say nipple, okay? Just a warning, I'm gonna say nipple. I said it twice already. Like the, the, the nipple of the, the reamer, I know that's not the official term, but the, the point, the pointy end. Okay, look, it looks like worn, a little disappointing. So hopefully we can juice it. Okay. Oh, it's quite flimsy. That feels like it wants to snap. Right, so I've, I've, I've juiced it, but then now, oh, crikey, that's tough. I thought this might help some people. Ah, oh, no, if I loosen it, it does turn a lot better. Oh, crikey. Ah, right, well, see what's happened is now gravity has made it sit on there. What if I push it down firmer with that? Ah, no. And like, if I just, <laughs> I wanna try and get that back, there we go. There's sort of like a sweet spot between, there we go. There. You don't wanna push it too hard because it's kind of like, I can't move. But then obviously if you don't put it on there, it's just like going, ooh. So just a gentle caress 
that is pretty well hollowed out too. And the seeds have kind of stayed in there. I don't know if there's some sort of, oh, there's a few in there, which is exactly the point of these things. I actually got quite a lot out. And you know what? I did only need the juice of uh, half a lemon, but we'll go again. Um, and this is the slightly smaller half. This is the only thing, for some reason, I don't like that you've got a sort of, because the instruct there was no instructions with this. Literally, I'm a lemon squeezer, work it out yourself. Oh God, it's that first. <sighs> okay, so lemon and lime and onions going into the lemon juice. And now for something completely different. I was in the supermarket getting my ingredients for the video today and I saw these carrots and they just reminded me literally of stereotypical carrots from a cartoon and I had to buy them and I remembered I had this probably quite unnecessary gadget which you could just use a pot for. In fact, it probably is a pot. This is a snack on the go uh, carrot and hummus holder. So literally, um, we're gonna see if it works. I bought carrots after all. <laughs> Got some store-bought hummus, but honestly making your own, um, I once met, I did this thing for YouTube in Berlin, the hummus making world champion at the time. And he let me taste some of it and it was the most smoothest thing ever. It was gorgeous. But I don't think this should be limited to just like carrots and hummus, should it? But you could put like uh, fruit with like chocolate there or something or cream and strawberries if you want like a little bit of a Wimbledon vibe. They're doing themselves a bit of a disservice there unless they're very savvy and they've got one for each, <laughs> every single food combo. Oh no, you can't put fruit and chocolate in that. No, you need the uh, brown one. So actually you need to make, that's one downside. You've always kind of got to be like, right, okay, let's go halfway. You want to make sure <laughs> that the carrot will fit in. Now, will the lid go on? Beautiful. So let's just do some role play pretending that I had a real job, you know, like everyone else. Oh, I'm on my coffee break. Ah, oh, thank goodness I've got my carrot and hummus on the go pot thing. Mmm, I've had far too much carrot. I'm not a rabbit. Let's put that back in there too. Yeah, and then you can just like bung that in the fridge. That is actually, <laughs> I don't think my priority would be to use it for carrots and hummus, but that worked. Actually, just before we move on, could you let me know down below, like this is what happens when I film. I, I kind of get like brain fog with stuff like this. Like what, I mean, I just came up with chocolate, but what would you put? Like in that pot. I mean, I'm not saying I'm gonna, next time I see Stuart, we'll do, yeah, mate, we'll do a video. We'll do a will it carrot hummus pot. He'll be like, what? Actually, another thing I'd be really interested with is do you reckon you could do like, you know how you do like nettle soup? Do you reckon you could do like a, infuse a carrot soup or just make a soup? I mean, you definitely can, whether it would taste any good, but maybe it's a thing. You could do a carrot soup infused with carrot bush. Okay, next up is something that I've lost the packaging to. I'm completely sorry, I'm not sure. I think it was about four pounds uh, and it's this thing. This is by uh, somebody called Zeal. It's got a garlic bulb on it, so I think it's fairly uh, self-explanatory. Oh, the bottom comes off too. What the heck? This is like what those dolls, you open the dolls and more and more appears. Um, oh, that's a peeler for the garlic, which I've already done off camera. Okay. Well, I've got another one. Hang on, let's just see. These normally work either terribly or really well. <sighs> yeah, that's okay. You can get different ones that have got like a little bit of friction in, so it grips it. This is just sort of like having like the time of its life. But anyhow, I peeled my garlic already. Uh, we've got this blade. So the top, there we go. Little push down thing uh, and uh, a square blade. So we should be able to take this out in theory. There we go. Oh, hang on. Is that a, oh, look at this little grid. That should clean, ah, oh, that's clever. So that stays on there to help clear out any sort of gunk. And there's normally some. All right, so let's go for some slices first. This is quite dainty, isn't it? Stick this down. Oh, wow, that was tough. Oh, oh my gosh, it's fallen out. To be fair, slicing it like, into thin strips like that, it's not gonna be as easy as the grid one, which we'll do now, but you know, that's actually got some really nice slithers on there. I don't need them slithered, which is why I did that one first. Slithered, what a word. Now this is quite a big clove, so we'll see. It might not want to do this. No, I'm gonna, <laughs> I think I might break it. So let's help it. There we go. It's like a small version of a veggie prep kit. Now actually, does this, yes. <gasps> that, this is amazing. The whole tray comes out like that, like a little compartment. Okay, it wouldn't be very good on an onion. It would take blooming ages, but for garlic like that, that's actually quite a little fun thing. 
like this bit was shocking, but more and more things appeared. And look, you know, there's not too messy actually, but we should be able to just lift that off. Look, that's brilliant. So I guess one good thing is we can uh, shove the majority of that garlic in. And randomly, I've, I mean, I've never done this concoction before, but the acidity in the lemon is probably stopping the onion from, well, discoloring or even sort of, well, kind of doing what we're hoping this thing to do. I mean, it's much better with an avocado and maybe that would have been better to show you that. I have one literally for an avocado I could have shown you. Another day. All right then guys, so I've got a blob of butter here. I'm just gonna help uh, melt it a slight bit with a little bit of fresh chicken stock that I've just boiled up. And we're gonna put some of our lemon lime onion mix in there. I don't really know what I'm doing here to be honest, but we'll just go with it, all right? Yeah, that'll do. And I'm just gonna stick in a few like fresh thyme leaves as well. Back to our main bowl. Uh, I'm gonna pour in some red wine and the chicken stock. Yeah, not really a flavor thing, more a volume thing of where this is actually ultimately gonna end up. So I've got some more herbs here, different rosemary and well, some more thyme again to be fair as well. But just for the minute, imagine that we've made this sort of stock thing, okay? This is our bodge stock, but you wanna pour it away into a Ziploc bag to store it for another day. We've all been there, right? These uh, varying sizes Ziploc bags that you sort of zip up and seal Baby, I have a kiss from a rose on it. This is the bag opener and holder. What an original name. <laughs> Holds plastic bags upright and open in order to easily pour in casserole, soups, marinades, and leftovers. So obviously it folds flat for easy storage. We can kind of see that, it's pretty good. Adjustable arms hold various bag heights and sizes and the suction base keeps the holder in place. So we've got our weird wine stock marinade thing that we've made there. I've got three various bag sizes that I've ordered to see if this does the different heights with Mrs. B's over the moon about. Let's try it. Stick it down. Now we lift the arms up. Hello. Now how high do these go? Ooh. Ooh. This was the bag that I just showed you. It was classed as small. Uh, in the supermarket, so hopefully, tuck it under there so there's some little grooves that it bites to. Oh my word, that's amazing. We've all been there, haven't we? Trying to like get stuff into these sorts of bags. That's actually really good. If you wanted to, could you raise it up? <laughs> yes. I don't have anything to put in this. Let's put a carrot pot in it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh. But as good as that was, I've got three different size bags, okay? So that was small. I wanna go for the Polar Extreme now. I've never seen them like this size. Well, this is an extra large bag and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I mean, it's still gonna hold it, which I guess is still half the thing. Once you pour it in, it will just fill itself out, but it would, it would sort of work, but we very rarely get bags that big. So then. I'm just doing it in a jug so it's easier. You know what, it's sort of giving me like a router vibe. It, it's definitely, if you have a router that looks like this, uh, you're missing some wiring. But this is a medium sized bag, which is what we typically tend to get. Oh, this is very trusting. Oh, clip it together. And that, that is actually really, really helpful for a lot of people. I mean, you, you wanna get a better suction pad on there. Hey, you could even semi-permanently fix it down to something if you're gonna use it often. It's not the prettiest looking thing by any means. I can't believe I've had that here in the house for nearly three years. <laughs> and with this generally times where we struggle with this. That is, that is exceptionally useful. I hope you agree with me. I've actually got to get this out now anyway. So as I've just slathered a chicken in some of the butter mix where we divided that up, I've preheated my oven and my onion delicately weeps in the background. Where are we all going? Where is this heading? That's an open question. Well, uh, there's this thing that I found in the bargain bin of TK Maxx, which I think is called TJ Maxx in some countries. This is uh, by Landman, which I think is quite a well-known barbecue company. Um, it's a, basically a glorified beer can chicken holder thing. It's, it's basically called, it's called a chicken holder. However, unlike a beer can, which of course, thinking about it, you could just pour the beer out and add in any marinade or stock you want. This is uh, a metal chicken holder, which could go on uh, a barbecue also. And it's all sort of encased together. That does not uh, come apart. Can't unscrew that to clean it or anything. We'll give it a good old wash just like before, but basically this can get filled with the fluid which will steam the chicken and push all that flavor through that we've created. We've definitely created something. I think I can take it nearly to the top. There we go. It should sit on there. Oh, there we go. That sat on there really nice. That's got slabbered already with that butter mix we made separately. Chick in. 
Uh, one hour 45 apparently actually turned out gorgeous. But in all seriousness, actually I was on the gadget show uh, in the UK and I did uh, in a big green egg uh, beer can chicken years ago and it sort of does steam the chicken. We've done it a few times before. Barbecue amazing, but also in an oven. It really does make the chicken really moist and you get all those flavors that we put in there working their way up through. And obviously it did have that little plate underneath that will probably collect some juices too. Pretty cool. It has been two hours. Oh boy. Whoa. And all of these juices are sizzling like crazy. So that's gonna be a combination of our stock that sort of bubbled over and steamed and pushed all that flavor through that tender chicken. I'm so glad we put it on a big tray like that with a lip to catch those extra juices. And the great thing with it being on a stand like this, I've not really got to move it, but we can let it rest literally in that position. You know, you don't want any flies around it, which actually brings us onto one last gadget whilst it does rest. Yep, because last up is uh, something that's sort of a kitchen gadget and more of an outdoor food gadget to prevent flies getting at your food. Now, I have no idea how I can actually test this. Um, this is called the Flyaway, uh, the safe and environmentally friendly device for fly-free entertaining. Which again, as I add on my own, fly-free entertaining, I've got a whole chicken to myself, life is good. It's got soft, flexible blades that rotate quietly and are completely safe to touch. Reach over for food and the blades will stop. All right. An on and off switch is located at the bottom of the device along with a battery compartment which requires two AA batteries. That is pretty much it. As I'm fighting this label, I had a little idea of what we could do and it actually involves our onion. That has been sat there the whole video. It's been a long old day. And there it is. Look at this thing. Oh wow. Is that sensors on it? It looks like glitter. It's not, is it? Very, very light. No instructions, standard. These blades are the least unblady thing I've ever seen. Um, so let's just turn it on. Okay, we'll bring in our onion and we'll pretend that's there. So apparently, look how quiet it is. It's pretty good, isn't it? Jeez. Um, reach over for food and the blades will stop. No, it won't. No, it won't. Where, do I reach over there? Is there another switch? No, it's literally on or off, brilliant, okay. Oh, it's cooling me down a little bit. Reach over for food and the blades will stop. Reach over. Reach over. Oh, I think, is it literally the fact that you will physically stop it like that? Is that it? Surely not. Then what's the point of these things? Is that just literally glitter? It's decoration. <laughs> I think that's just something shiny to scare, like, I only said rats, flies away. Like the, the sort of metallic look, the, the glittery reflection. Oh no, you know, like people that hang up CDs to scare off birds. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't hurt at all. But I was really hoping that it'd be like, oh, excuse me, and then it would stop. But then it doesn't hurt at all. Um, well, whilst we've got this here, um, we have got the uh, pod. Yeah, this looks a little bit different because uh, like usual, I sign these and give them away to one of my patrons that helps support with the running costs of the channel. So uh, thanks very much for that. But if we take this one out, that's getting really annoying. <laughs> it's like something constantly like, it's a little bit of moisture in the bottom, but that color ooh, is pretty good. Bearing in mind, this has been out for like seven hours. I don't know if you can see it there, but there is a little discoloration. Can you see it's sort of gone a bit browner? That's just where it stood out. And if I left it for like another day, it would be even worse. However, this has given me an idea. We're gonna go outside for about five minutes and just see if any flies get attracted to this. I'll let the camera roll and see if, um, well, we'll bring this in and swat them away. I don't know if flies like onions. Oh, maybe I'll put a blob of jam on it. Or anything with sugar, this is sweet chili sauce. So we'll just put a little bit of that. Right, let's just go outside. I mean, I don't really want to make a, a thing of this. Well, we <laughs> kind of had now. I know I'm not eating that. All right, it's quite windy out here. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to hear me. I'm just going to put that down there and uh, we'll just see if any flies come along.
Shall we try another spot? It's been sat over there for like 10 minutes. Do you know that's that weird thing that like when you actually want a fly to appear, like Boston's keeping his eye on it for me, but there's just no flies appearing at all. So I'm gonna get Boston to play the role of a fly, okay? And you really want some sweet chili onion, don't you? Yes, you do. Oh no, how am I gonna protect myself from this gigantic fly? This, of course. Look, Boston, you really want the sweet chili, that, ah, but you're into it, yeah, see? Yes. Oh no, <laughs> you can duck. Right, let's put you there. You can duck under it. No, damn, you still want it. Right, there you go. See, that, yes. Those soft blades will not hurt you. See? <laughs> You know what? There's nothing on that at all. No, I'm not eating that. Uh. Uh. I think that actually would work in the right setting. Perhaps a setting that had flies. All right, so I've washed my hands and we're kind of like fly free now. <laughs> this would be it now, there'll be a fly that generally comes in. Oh, oh, I don't, ah. Gotta remember that's still gonna be really full with the fluid, isn't it? Ah, uh, that's where the oven gloves will help. Okay. Oh, it's still really warm. And with this being metal, ah! Look, hardly any of that has evaporated. That smells absolutely amazing. And there's even a slight red tinge from some of it that might have bubbled over a little bit with the chicken juices. And if I just tip that, you can see how many juices there are in that pan. So, uh, ooh. Well, let's get that chicken down. Oh! Oh my goodness, that feels so tender. Oh, and the smell coming off of it, very, very citrusy, I'll give it that. But this is a roast chicken made pretty much entirely with kitchen gadgets. I love it with these gadget compilations where I can actually make an entire recipe with that. And I might try and do a few more of those with everything I've got left. Oh, mmm, that is like melt in the mouth chicken. And I like the thing that if you, know, you want to do beer can chicken, you could have just poured a can of beer in there, or of course, just put a beer can there instead, or indeed a Fanta one. We've done that before on the channel, really, really fun. So it works, there's so many different ways you can take that, a really fun video. But like I say, I've signed all those, they will be given away. I think my favorite one today, I've been thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I really, really liked the microplane. But then I think this, is absolutely phenomenal. If there's something better out there, if you guys have seen anything, do let me know, send me links and I'll top up my gadget box. But I think this is really practical, really useful for so many different scenarios. I've definitely been in situations where I've spilt things trying to get them into those Ziploc bags. Perhaps the lemon squeeze arima thing was probably the worst. Actually, the build quality didn't feel great and it didn't perform amazingly, but it still did the job. Check out the rest of the kitchen gadget videos here on the channel that goes on for absolute hours. Grab the popcorn, keep the suggestions coming, and I'll see you very soon. Ciao for now. Why are you not stopping? Stop. <laughs>